Okay, hello everybody. Welcome to Korean Atlanta Mentorship. So, I don't know if you ever heard of the word uh, or phrase revenge bedtime procrastination, but basically it's when you don't go to sleep and you're sacrificing sleep for personal time, right? And I know what's funny is that every time I post a velocity banking video at like midnight or 1 a.m., I wake up and sometimes it's like 100, 200 people have watched it. Like, whoa, how did that happen, right? And I think I'm uh, engaging in rev revenge bedtime procrastination right now. And uh, what's crazy is that it's not for the reason that you think. Like, I'll tell you what happened. You might be, you know, some of you, like, track and follow when I upload videos. And so what happened was um, yesterday, for whatever reason, I did, like, a wrong uh, YouTube search. Like, I, I think I typed in the wrong thing. And then I saw, like, oh, what's, what's this in my search result? You know, Q I N G Maddie, and it's a musician and 124,000 subs. Hmm, let's check it out. It might be good. And then, like, I fell in love with the music. It's it's like Nigerian music, and I was like, whoa, why is this so good? <laughs> and uh, uh, yesterday, I didn't post it. I don't think I posted any videos because I was just like listening to Nigerian pop Afro beat music, and I was just like, whoa, this. Like, especially this artist, like, I had no idea who this was yesterday, and I've been addicted to her music, and um, the way that you actually pronounce it is King Maddie. I was like, dude, this is, like, so good. Like, it's fresh, she has really good voice and rhythm, and it's not over the top, and it's something that I don't think I've ever heard before. Maybe, you know, um, it's because I haven't been into music for a long time, but when I listened to this, I was like, oh, wow, like... I want to listen to all of her stuff. And that's why I didn't post anything Velocity Bay or any videos yesterday. Because I was just like listening to Nigerian music. But <laughs> but again, that's my, my form of revenge uh, bedtime procrastination. Just listening to, to music that I haven't listened That You know, it's a new genre of music. I was like, dang, this is awesome. But for you, for people watching this video, you're probably engaged in revenge bedtime procrastination because you're addicted to Velocity Banking. So let's do another demonstration that we always do with our spreadsheets. So let's go with the basics, right? What is velocity banking? All it is is a debt payoff strategy using lines of credit as your main tool, right? It's a way to quickly pay off debts using your lines of credit and your cash flow as your main tool. And there's really two steps to this, right? So number one is a budget. And actually, I got to erase this. So number one is a budget. And all a budget is is telling you which debts that you're going to pay off so that you can maximize your cash flow, right? Because think of your cash flow kind of as like a bucket, right? So your income is like your water in the bucket. And then every single debt that you have is kind of like a hole in the bucket, right? So what we're going to do is pay off debt, patch up the holes, and maximize our cash flow. So in this scenario, we have $5,500 of income and about $3,900 of expenses. So the savings is pretty good, right? A lot of people will actually look at this and complain, oh my goodness, this is so unrealistic because most Americans don't have over $1,000 of savings. And that's true, right? That's absolutely true. So, but we're just going to assume this is the case for now. And just remember, everything's all relative, right? So banks don't lend you money when you need it. So they expect you to have a proportional DTI or debt to income ratio. So whether you're making 10 grand, 15 grand, it doesn't matter. Um, it's almost all the same principle because if you have make less money, you're going to have less debt in theory. Now I say in theory, because in this country we offer student loans to people like candy, like 200, $300,000 of debt for something that they have no idea what they're doing. Right. All right. So enough of that. Now, we're going to use a line of credit as our main operating account. And I'm going to tell you the difference, main difference between someone who does velocity banking and someone who does not. So we call the someone the average American as someone who operates other checking accounts. It's not about making more money because we assume that we make more money. Or we don't make more money. I'm sorry. We make the same amount. But here's the crazy part that most people cannot adjust to or they think it's nuts if you just tell them. Like I told my parents this. And they thought I was insane, right? And so I'm going to put zero here, right? So some of you might be like, and this includes Dave Ramsey, where it's like, you need to have three to six months of savings, right? But I have zero savings. Why? 
because my line of credit is like my emergency fund or savings account. Okay. And so you have to do, you do have to have a line of credit available. So some people get offended, like, oh my goodness, where do I have a line of credit available? But that's the thing. This is why you need to be prepared and build a foundation because banks don't lend money to people who need it. Right. So luckily I have a line of credit just available sitting around because I have over $258,000 of lines of credit and I have $15,000 available in a personal line of credit. Now, should I use this? I don't know. Let me go ahead and zoom in here. This $15,000. Oh my goodness. Available to me to use. And I know some of you are looking at this and dang, it's like, dang, I'm so jealous, right? I'm jealous too. No, I'm just kidding. I, should I be jealous of myself? But um, yeah, $50,000 available. And let's take a look at the interest rate here. So the interest rate is variable and it might change, but it's usually 15%, right? Or somewhere around that 15%, it could change daily. And so I'm going to go in here and we'll change this to 15%. Now, again, if we had, if since we're a homeowner, we have a mortgage right here, we could have access to something called a home equity line of credit. And because you're offering your home equity as collateral to the lender, you know, whenever you offer collateral, you get better rates and better limits, right? So that's that's why you'll get, with home equity lines of credit, you usually get more uh, bang out of your buck. It's just if you screw up and don't meet your obligations, then the bank could possibly foreclose, okay? But let's just assume this example, we don't have a home equity line of credit, that we just essentially have a personal line of credit, okay? Personal, right? So we'll just say it's 15 thousand dollars available limit right and what we're going to do and what's the actual velocity banking strategy let's just do this is it's your entire paycheck into your line of credit and expenses out and rinse and repeat over and over again that's that's all it is people overcomplicate this strategy i mean I've made videos like, let's see me do velocity banking in one second, right? And they get so obsessed about doing these spreadsheets. These spreadsheets are there for you to understand the concept, but the actual implementation of the strategy literally takes one second or two, I don't know, depending on your internet connection on your bank's website, right? So now here's the thing. Even though we have zero savings, we still, we're gonna calculate how fast we pay off our debt by our cash flow, and we want to maximize this number. So right now we see that their savings and their cash flow are the same, but let's go ahead and transfer some debt. So we have how much is this? 14 grand of credit card debt, right? So why don't we move this 14 grand into our personal line of credit? Okay. And so what happens here just by doing a simple debt transfer, zero, zero, zero. Oh my goodness. Now we went from fifteen hundred to almost two thousand without making more money. Right, so you put so there's a, a a order a debt payoff. Now, in general, we want to pay off the mortgage last, right? Why is that? Is because the mortgage actually compared to the loan amount takes a very little cash flow, whereas maybe your student loan, auto loan, especially your credit cards, take up more cash flow compared to the amount that you owe, right? That's why we always want to move the credit cards first, usually. Okay, so now. Let's go ahead and just do the calculations. Very easy. And what I'm going to do is calculate the next month's balance, which is based on the previous month's balance plus the previous month's interest minus our cash flow, which is 1975, 1975.73. Oh my goodness, look how easy that was, right? And after every month, we calculate the average, the, the interest, which is based on the average daily balance. Multiply by 0.1 or 0.15, which is this 15% interest rate, and then divide by 12. Okay, and now all we gotta do is just copy and paste. And so now, uh, in eight months, in eight months, we paid off 14 grand of credit card debt, right? So, eight months, uh, 14k paid off. Oh my goodness, how easy was that, right? And then now, what we gotta do is figure out. Are we going to pay off the student loan, auto loan, mortgage? I get, I 99.999% guarantee that we're going to pay off the mortgage last, right? And usually the amount of cash flow that a, um, uh, a, 
a loan takes up is really proportional to either the interest rate or the length. So the longer the loan goes, so mortgages are for 30 years, the less cash flow it will take. And auto loans, I think in my experience are five years, even though I've never bought a car before, I've always had hand-me-downs. But just from my understanding, and student loans are 10 years, I had to look that up in my old student loan documents. So I'm guessing that we're gonna pay off the auto loan first, then the student loan, because it's 10 years, and then the mortgage, right? So let's go ahead and take a look at what these balances are. And I'm gonna go ahead to this one right here. So 25,000, 10 years, and how many months was it? It's not gonna pay, get paid off that quickly. Um, so this is gonna be eight months. Oh yeah, here's some videos about revenge bedtime procrastination. Revenge bedtime procrastination. Oh geez doing that right now aren't you with me watching these videos <laughs> all right so let's go here and this is eight months so it's 23 grand so this one is 23 grand and then do the auto loan which is 22 there's a zero at five years and then we'll say five percent again if you've bought a car recently what was your interest rate because I heard the average car payment these days is like 700 bucks, which is <laughs> insane. You might be buying one of those $90,000 trucks. All right, so let's go here, 22,000 at 5%. And then, do, 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 where are we here? I'm getting so confused, probably because I'm not even that sleepy, to be honest. But let's do this, 19 grand. And then the mortgage, uh, let's skip that for now. But let's see how much debt we're paying off. So five, five plus seven, five plus seven plus two plus twenty-five, twenty-two plus two hundred, and then two sixty-one. So pay off two sixty-one k of debt. Okay. So now um, let's take a look here. How do we know which one of these three to pay off? Um, there's two methods, the general debt payoff criteria, which is a little bit subjective. You find the uh, debts with the lowest balance, highest interest rate, and highest payment, whatever fits as much as possible in these three criteria. Or I like to use the cash flow index, which is a formula that helps you or, uh, like organize yourself and let you know which debts to pay off first. So all it is is a simple formula of the balance divided by the monthly payment. Let me just go ahead and calculate that. So this is equals balance is 23659.74 divided by 259.1. And then this one is 19373.94 divided by 415.17. Okay, so as you can see, this number is much lower than this number. So according to the cash flow index, you want to pay off the lower number first. So that's why we're going to attack the auto loan. So this is what we can do. Um, in general, when you have a high interest line of credit and a low interest loan with a small, well, how should I say this? A low interest loan, you don't have to move the entire thing to the line of credit, right? What you can do is, I would actually prefer this method, just pay it off in chunks, like move some of the principal and then pay it off as quickly as possible, at least this one, then you'll get $415.17. Now, luckily, we have a Velocity Banking calculator to kind of figure out all of this. That'll do all the calculations for you. And I got it from Renatus because I'm a Renatus student. And full disclosure, I actually make commission off of selling Renatus products. But let's go ahead and do this. So let me do this. So I just put in the information here. So think of this as like a cheat sheet. So 22,000, and then the balance of it is 19373.94. So 19373.94, and then the interest rate of that auto loan is 5% for five years. And what is the payment amount? It is 415.17. So 415.17, and then let's just move uh how much are we making i totally forgot i always have to go back and forth five thousand five hundred to that line of credit 
and what are our expenses it's everything except for the loan we're trying to pay off I'm going to use that calculator so let me go ahead and take these and then just sum it up whoopsie all right okay sum d11 to sum d13 so 3109.1 that's the sum so 310, whoa, screen went crazy. So 3109.1. Okay, and then let's just move this $6,000 from that um, the uh, auto loan to the line of credit and just pay it off and see how long it takes. Ooh, 0. 0.7 years. So if you take a look at this, you don't pay that much interest anyways. I mean, two grand in total for the, uh, or I guess from 19,000 for that alone, I guess it's not that much. But here's the crazy thing. You know, if you ever go to a car dealership and try to pay in cash, they'll actually charge you like some sort of weird convenience fee, about $700. So they're desperate for that profit. So even if they make this two grand over time, it's really valuable to the car dealership. But you're gonna you're gonna take that loan and I guess uh, pay it off in point seven years. So let me just go back here and add that right here. Oh my screen's going crazy. So let me reload this. Sorry. Okay. So now we paid this off, right? So this is now zero, and so now it's eight months plus. 0.7 times 12, which is 16.4 months, right? So 16.4 months. And how much do we pay off? So it's that 14K right here plus 22K. So let's see if I can do math. 36, 36K paid off in 16.4 months. Amazing. And look at our cash flow number, 2390.9. Now, we're going to go ahead and attack that student loan. So let's update the balance of this at um, 16 months, or we'll say 17 months. 16.4, we'll just kind of round up. And then let's go to here. So it's 25,000, 10-year amortization, and 4.5 interest rate. 4.5. <sighs> Four point five interest rate. Where am I going? <laughs> what am I doing? All right. So now this is. Did I say seventeen months? Yeah, seventeen months. Dude. All right. Let's go ahead here, and then put this here. All right. So we got that covered, and let's just put it in this calculator to see the payoff. So let me go here. And put. 25,000. Okay. And then this is going to be 4.5, 10 years. And then what is the payment amount? It's 259.1. So 259.1. And then, uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. am I missing anything? I don't know if you ever heard that key and peel skit where it's like, I bup, 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 or something like that. If you don't know what I'm talking about, ignore you know what I'm saying. Okay, so 22,000 and 259, 4.5%. Okay, excellent. Now, what we got to do is just readjust these expenses to only include everything except for the debt that we're paying off. So it's going to be our mortgage and then our this one. So it's going to just be these two. So let's go ahead and add these up and... That would be 2850. So let's go ahead and change this to 2850. Whoopsie, 2850, right? Oh, take a look at that. 0. 0.7 years, right? <laughs> so 0. 0.7 years and only $500 of interest. So 0. 0.7. And what we're going to do is this is going to be a zero and it's going to be 16.4 plus 0. 0.7 times 12. Right, so it's 24.8 months. 24.8 months. So 24.8 months, and now we got to add in 25,000, which is 39, 39k. 
No, not 39, Kim. What am I doing? It's 25 plus 36. So that's going to be... Hmm. Nah, it's, that's sad. I can't do it in my head. <laughs> or at least not at this moment. So equals 25 plus 36. So 61K. Okay. Okay, so now we got that. And then now what we're going to do is now we attack the mortgage, right? So after 24.8 months, or we'll just say 25 months, what's what's the balance of that $200,000 mortgage? And we just go here. I'm sorry, not here. So that's what makes like doing all of this hard because you have to always go back and forth and figure out what the status of each of these are. So $200,000 at 6%, whoopsie, 30 years at 6%, and at let's say 25 months. Ooh, so that's like the year two, so take a look at that of how much interest we pay, right? We, we paid so much in interest. Take a look here, right? 1,900, blah, 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 900, 900. Like most of your payment goes to interest in the very beginning years. So, <laughs> all right, so now we're gonna go ahead and uh, go ahead and just enter the stuff in the calculator and the calculator will tell us how long it'll take me to pay off, right? And uh, all right, so $200,000 is that original balance. And I get it, you know, nowadays, so many people are overpaying for homes, it's it's insane. Like, I remember when I first came to Atlanta, I begged my parents to please buy a home here in like 2015. And this was like when California had gone way past the boiling point beyond insane. And then when I f first came to Atlanta, I was like, why are properties here so cheap? And these are like in what I thought were good areas because was my frame of reference was in California. And then, you know, right now, if I look up those same properties, their market value is 800000 It's crazy how that happened, right? So let's go ahead and copy and paste this in. All right, so... Uh, what's the interest rate? It's six percent, thirty years, and twelve hundred, and then same thing. Everything except the mortgage. So now it's we just put the sixteen fifty in, and you might say, well, why don't we put the twelve hundred in into here because it's already accounted for here, according to the calculator. And so if, let's just go ahead and put sixteen fifty. So in the expenses, and then bam. <laughs> you know, mortgage payoff is only five years, okay? And we would have paid $200,000, um, <laughs> right? It's crazy. So now I just got to add five years to this. And so now this is paid off. So this is zero. And let's see how long it takes. So to calculate the total payoff is 16.4 months divided by 12, which will tell you the number of years and then it took us five years to pay off that mortgage. And so we just add five. And then so now it's going to take us 6.37 years in total. We'll just say 6.4. 6 Let's round up. 6.4 years for, for all of your debt to be paid off. And that's 261K of debt. That's, that's amazing. Is your mind blown? I don't know if your, my, my mind is blown. Because I've done this so many times, and sometimes you get so used to it. But, <laughs> but you know, it's fun. It's fun to do these as an example. And, you know, I always just kind of, you know, there's only so many scenarios that you can go through with velocity banking. Like, if you just have one loan, then it's like the easiest thing ever, right? Like, you have, you probably have, like, an insane amount of savings or cash flow. So whether you dump that money directly into the loan or use a line of credit, honestly, at that point, it doesn't matter. But what we're trying to do is come up with a holistic solution so that we don't ever get into a situation and we pay off all our loans quickly. And that's why velocity banking is a great strategy, right? So 
Um, I think that's it for today. I mean, so what about you? Are you going to engage in revenge, bedtime procrastination even further and watch more videos? Because I'm always surprised whenever I upload a video, uh, like at 1 a.m. or 2 a.m., like I wake up at like 7 a.m., there's like 200 views, right? So I know there's a lot of out people out there doing revenge, bedtime procrastination. I'll probably just do it with more of the this pop music that I've been enjoying listening to. King Maddie. Oh, my goodness. This, this artist is so good. Like... I feel like she's going to be like the next superstar. Like the Nigerian music scene is going to go like, I know it's kind of like big, but I think it's going to be like big, big. Like it maybe even take over the United States or maybe just, I'm just saying that because I was so impressed listening to her music. And I feel like she's got, she's got the it factor. Right. And I don't know how to explain it, but it's been a long time since I've been impressed with like, a thing, if that makes sense. All right, well, <laughs> this is Korean Atlanta Mentorship. If you're interested in joining our group, go ahead and click the Google form link below. Other than that, have a great day, and we'll speak next time.